indicate to you when you signed that Mike or they would draft a quarterback? Was that ever discussed? They didn't. Um, I knew coming into the situation, uh, just even coming from here from last year, wherever I was going to go, I was going to have to come in, compete, uh, earn the trust of my teammates, and get back onto the field uh, with hard work and my talent and just being a leader on this team. So uh, we didn't have those conversations, but I, I knew it was a possibility to come in wherever I would go next. Mitchell Trubisky, he wasn't told that the Steelers would draft a quarterback, and that's not how it works. I mean, why, why, why would you want to tell? Hey, look, you, you sign him, you give him a contract, contract is what it is, you come in and you compete, and he's sufficiently self-aware of his situation exactly. to know that he wasn't 100% safe. It wasn't like Russell Wilson. Right. Like, we, I mean, not, not that the Broncos had a first-round pick, but if they did, it's not like they're going to take a quarterback in round one. They got Russell Wilson, although they did take Brock Osweiler in round two the year they got Peyton Manning, which is so weird in hindsight, especially since they could have had Russell Wilson. But I digress. Um, and there is an irony here, Chris, because the Bears signed Mike Glennon and he was the starter in Chicago in 2017 for about six weeks until they drafted Mitchell Trubisky. So Trubisky's seen both sides of this one. Definitely has. He's no, he's, he's, he understands the NFL at this point and who he is as a player and how he's perceived. You know, I, I'm sure it was almost the opposite. He was probably sitting there at one point going, man, am I going to get this lucky and we're not going to have another quarterback here? Am I going to be the starter? This is amazing. Yes, he, he understands where he, at, he is. After Chicago, he's kind of relegated to backupsville there, like we've talked about. You know, he, he improved his image. He played good in the preseason. You know, he had a, a team that is valued as a good offensive football team where, you know, they all looked at him and went, wait, this guy's good. Like, he can play quarterback for us. And that herped, her, helped his perception around the league. So he's not clueless. He understands that he was going to have to, uh, again, compete to establish himself as that guy once again. And that's what it will take, you know, and, and he's going to have to fend off the, the rookie who's, yeah, going to be loved and favored by the fan base to a degree. But, you know, you win some games and you play some good football and you make a few plays here and there, you, know, you can win over the fan base to where, you know, at least they're not clamoring for the rookie quarterback to come off the bench on a weekly basis. And we were talking yesterday about the schedule and how it would work and where yeah, it would fit. And I right. think someone sent me this. One of the Steelers' offensive linemen made a comment yesterday implying that Trubisky is number one, at least for now. And, and it would just make sense. You know, teams like to take that young quarterback and drop him down the depth chart to give him a way to earn it, to make him build some confidence. You go from three to two to one, and the players see it. They That's see part it. of it, too. The players no have to be on board yes. with it. They have to feel that the guy deserves it. You made the point about Kenny Pickett going to Carolina, possibly, and they show up for OTAs, and Sam Darnold is slinging it all over the place, and Kenny Pickett isn't, and guys are like, well, no. Eh. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in Pittsburgh, Pickett's got to earn it. And, and, you know, that's the bottom line. And Mike Tomlin's not going to screw around with that. you got to earn that job. And if Trubisky's the better option, he'll be the quarterback, plain and simple. Tomlin is going to try to win games. He's going to put the best players on the field at any given time in an effort to win games the way he's always been. It's one of the reasons why he's never had a losing season since he took that job in 2007. Yeah, there's going to be no BS there. And I, I look at them as to be like one of those teams that's, yeah, uh, less political maybe than – than some of the other teams in football. They're not afraid to rip the Band-Aid off or if they made a mistake, okay, it's not working here, let's play this guy. You know, we, we've seen that. You know, even, hey, they, they, they traded up to, to get Devin Bush, the, the Michigan linebacker. It hasn't really worked all, out all that well. He got hurt. That certainly hasn't helped him. But at the same time, they don't double down and go, well, fifth-year option because we, we traded up to get him and, you know, we made him a first-round pick and we're going to make that happen. No. You know, that's one example. There's a, there's many other examples, too, of them doing that. So they do what they have to do to win football games. That's the way Mike Tomlin is. And, you know, as we've discussed many times before, I mean, they've won games with Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph and guys that are certainly less talented than Mitchell Trubisky. And Trubisky, with the way this offense is, hey, he's, he's definitely a bump up from Ben Roethlisberger last year, like we discussed. And I think he really fits kind of what Matt Canada and the players they have around them where they want to move the quarterback and do a little quarterback design run and have that to be a part of uh, the threat of what the offense does. You couple that with Trubisky's ability to run, Najee Harris, his ability to run and catch the ball out of the backfield, 
And then you talk about the two receivers who we talk about a lot, Deontay Johnson and Claypool. They're difference makers. They're guys where you go, oh, man, one-on-one, that, that's a little scary. I don't know if we want to roll the dice on that too often. So uh, there, there's stuff there just with Trubisky at quarterback for a guy like Mike Tomlin or anybody that follows Pittsburgh to go, we can make it work with him and we can win games. And with our defense and Pittsburgh and Blitzburg and all that, yeah, I certainly see something there that, that the, the recipe could be right there in Pittsburgh for them to be a pain in the butt this year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.